Reading of St. Paul's Letter to the Ephesians Brothers, ever since I learned of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not ceased to give thanks for you when I remember you in my prayers. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father to whom the glory belongs, give you a spirit of wisdom that reveals him to you and makes him truly known. May he open your heart to his light, so that you may know what hope his calling gives you, what the riches of glory is in your inheritance with the saints, and what immense power he exercised in favor of us who believe, according to his omnipotent action and strength. He manifested his strength in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavens, far above all authority, power, power, sovereignty or any title that can be named not only in this world, but also in the future world. Yes, he put everything under his feet and made him, who is above all, the head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who possesses the universal fullness. Word of the Lord. Thank God. Proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever bears witness to me before men, the Son of Man will also bear witness to him before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before men will be denied before the angels of God. God, whoever says anything against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. What you will say. For at that time the Holy Spirit will teach you what you should say. Word of Salvation. Glory to you, Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, imagine yourself in a dark room, with a blindfold on. Suddenly, someone removes the blindfold, and a bright light floods the room. Your eyes blink, adjusting to the brightness, and gradually you begin to see details that were previously invisible. This powerful image illustrates the essence of today's readings, a journey from darkness to light, from ignorance to knowledge, from fear to courage. In the letter to the Ephesians, Paul begins with an expression of gratitude, I never cease to give thanks to God for you, remembering you in my prayers. What a beautiful example of love and pastoral care. Paul not only preaches and teaches, but constantly intercedes for his brothers and sisters in Christ. This reminds us of the importance of praying for one another, of bringing the needs of our community before God. But Paul doesn't stop at gratitude. He has a burning desire for the Ephesians, and for us, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Paul is praying for spiritual enlightenment, for a deeper understanding of who God is and what he has done for us in Christ. It is as if Paul is asking God to remove the blindfold from our spiritual eyes so that we can see clearly the riches of our inheritance in Christ. He wants us to understand what hope you are called to, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Reflect for a moment on these words. What is the hope to which we are called? It is not just a vague expectation that things will get better, but an unshakable certainty based on the resurrection of Christ and the promises of God. What is the richness of our inheritance? It is not earthly treasures that rust and are stolen, but eternal life itself, intimate communion with God, the fullness of joy in his presence. Paul continues, speaking of God's supreme power manifested in Christ. This power is not like the worldly power that oppresses and dominates. It is a power that resurrects, that elevates, that transforms. It is the power that raised Christ from the dead and placed him above all principality, power, power, and dominion. This is not an abstract truth, but a reality that has direct implications for our lives. If Christ is above all power and authority, what do we have to fear? If this same power works in us through the Holy Spirit, what challenge is too great for us to face? It is in this context of divine power and authority that we arrive at our gospel. Jesus is speaking to his disciples about the importance of publicly acknowledging him, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. At first glance, this may seem like a daunting requirement. In a world that is often hostile to faith, openly declaring our loyalty to Christ can be challenging. It can cost us relationships, 
opportunities, even physical safety in some contexts. But Jesus does not leave us alone in this challenge. He promises, when they lead you to the synagogues, to the magistrates and to the authorities, do not worry about how or with what you will defend yourselves, or what you will say, because the Holy Spirit will immediately teach you what you should say. What a comforting promise! The same Spirit that Paul mentions in the letter to the Ephesians, the Spirit of wisdom and revelation, is the one who will give us the right words at the right time. We need not rely on our own eloquence or wisdom, but on divine guidance. So how do we apply these powerful truths to our daily lives? First, we are called to constantly seek a deeper understanding of God. Just as Paul prayed for the Ephesians, we should pray for ourselves and one another, asking God to open the eyes of our hearts to see more clearly who He is and what He has done for us. Second, we must live in the reality of Christ's power. If Christ is above all power and authority, then there is no situation in our lives that is beyond His control. Whether facing illness, struggling with addiction, or dealing with a difficult relationship, we can trust that the power that raised Christ from the dead is at work in us. Third, we are called to be courageous witnesses for Christ. This does not necessarily mean preaching on street corners, but living in such a way that our faith is evident to those around us. It can be through an act of kindness, a word of encouragement, or simply the way we face adversity with hope and peace. Fourth, we must trust the guidance of the Holy Spirit. How often do we worry about what we will say or do in difficult situations? Jesus promises us that the Holy Spirit will guide us. Our responsibility is to remain open and obedient to His voice. Finally, let us remember that we are not alone on this journey. Paul speaks of the church as the body of Christ, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. We are part of a community of faith, sustained by each other's prayers and support. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are invited to open our eyes to the glorious reality of who we are in Christ. We are heirs of an unquenchable hope, recipients of incomparable power, and witnesses of a transformative truth. May we, like the person whose blindfold was removed, see clearly the light of God's knowledge. May we live with the confidence that comes from knowing that Christ reigns supreme over all things. And may we, empowered by the Holy Spirit, be courageous witnesses of God's love and grace in a world that so desperately needs hope. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.